Hi, everyone. My name is Laura Allen. I'm the program manager for accessibility on the Chrome and Chrome OS teams at Google. And Roger? Hello, everyone. My name is Roger Benz. I'm the accessibility program manager for G Suite. And today, we're going to cover some of the accessibility features in the Chromebooks. I'm going to cover accessibility features in G Suite. And then we're going to go through and give you some resources that you can get, you know, get information after the sessions. And then also, we hope to have some time at the end for questions and answers. So people may understand, wonder why we're doing accessibility. You know, that it's actually part of our mission statement to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. So it's something that we you know, do fundamentally believe in Google is the right thing to do for our users. But we're also finding out that by doing it, you end up having a diverse workforce, that you'll have somebody that may be blind, like my own, or somebody that's got a motor impairment, or cognitive impairment, or say deaf or hard of hearing. But we find out when you've got a diverse workforce, you're going to end up building better services and products for everyone. So that's why we think the accessibility features in G Suite and Chromebooks is important to meet in that goal of having a diverse workforce. So Laura, why don't you go ahead and tell us about some of the Chrome OS or Chromebook features. Awesome. Thank you, Roger. So first, can I just get a really quick clap of hands? How many of you in the audience have used a Chromebook before? OK. Awesome. So it's a good amount of you. So um, I'll just do a really brief introduction about Chromebooks as a whole. So Chromebooks are really lightweight, fast computing devices that are really designed to get you connected to the cloud, connected to the internet. Um, they're running you know, cloud-based apps, getting you online really quickly and efficiently. They're, they're not really designed to run your traditional software that would you would, like, load onto the device. Everything is really cloud-based. Um, we work with a number of different manufacturers to produce Chromebooks, so from Dell to Acer to HP to Samsung and many others. Uh, but they're all running the same Chrome operating system, which is developed um, by our teams at Google. So it's really important to us when we're developing these devices, this hardware, the, the operating system, it's super important for us to be thinking about accessibility each step of the way. So our team, the Chrome and Chrome OS accessibility team, works on a number of different features and functionalities that are built into every single Chromebook so that you have accessibility features right out of the box. From that very first time you boot up your machine and you're going through the sign-in process, you're able to use a variety of different features to help to make that process more inclusive and more accessible to you. Um, so what we're going to do today is go through a bit of like a roadshow of some of the different features that are available built into every Chromebook, regardless of whichever type of hardware you purchase, whichever manufacturer, like for example, an Acer versus a Dell, like all these features will be available across the board. So we'll start by talking about some features that are helping to make your Chromebook easier to see. And I'll, I will just share right off the bat that I am one of the users who relies on these features. Um, I happen to be low vision myself. And what that means for me is that basically I have a very, very visual condition that impacts my central vision. So uh, if you can imagine, like peripherally for me, uh, my vision is still clear. But anything I look directly at is this combination of kind of flashing lights and, and distortion and blur. So I use a number of these different features every day to make my work environment and my day-to-day -day just life environment more accessible to do what I need to do. So I'm just going to run through some different strategies here of what you can leverage on a Chromebook. So first, we'll talk about increasing the size of content, magnifying, and zooming. So the first way, the kind of the most basic way to increase the size of content on the screen is to uh, increase the browser content size. So you can do this by pressing Control plus, or you can decrease it by pressing Control minus at any time. And this just increases the size of the browser content itself. If that's not quite large enough, um, then we also have the ability to increase the display size and make everything on the screen larger. So this you can do by pressing Control Shift Plus. And this actually goes as far as to make the bottom shelf of app icons and the launcher, the system area on the right, uh, all the tab sizes, it can make all of those things larger as well. So you can find the right size that works best for you. Again, you can press Control Shift minus to decrease or Control Shift zero to reset at any time. 
But for many people, uh, specifically people who rely on magnification, that might still not be quite large enough. So we also provide different uh, ways to magnify content through our on-screen magnifiers. So these are available through accessibility settings in your Chromebook. And the first way is through using the built-in full screen magnifier. And when you flip this on, everything zooms in. And then you use the mouse cursor to control the content that is being displayed. So everything is zoomed in. You can actually go all the way up to 20x zoom. And then you can further control the zoom level either through the settings page or through a keyboard shortcut with a touchpad to kind of find that right level of magnification that works for you. But we do have one uh, newer feature that we've recently released as of Chrome OS version 66, which is our docked magnifier. And I'm going to play a brief video here. The way that the docked magnifier works is that it basically will allow you to magnify the top one third of the screen. And then the bottom two thirds of the screen, everything else is kind of resized to fit into the bottom. You then use your mouse cursor to move around and control what's being shown in that magnified portion. And as you type, then basically everything will stay centered, like the text that you're typing stays centered up in that area. You can still further increase the zoom or adjust the level all the way up to 20x the zoom level, um, or as low as you know 2x. So it's really. Um, the reason why we wanted to, to work on this flavor of magnification is that we had received some feedback from some of our magnification users um, that for some people, the full screen magnifier, especially when used on a smaller screen device, can be harder to actually um, have to pan around so frequently. And then you also have this sense of you kind of um, you run the risk of losing the big picture of where your cursor is on the screen. Um, so with this, it's, it gives you a little bit more control of understanding where the big picture, like where you are on the screen, and you reduce that overall amount of panning needed. So you can really find the right level of magnification and type of magnification that works best for you. So we also have an adjustable mouse cursor. So it's a large cursor feature. And then you can choose on a sliding scale whatever sli uh, size cursor works best for you. And we have a high contrast feature, which allows you to invert the colors, um, which can be really helpful. For example, for me and for, for other people who um, perhaps are low vision, sometimes it can be difficult to look at a screen for a long amount of time. It can be, lead to a lot of eye strain. So inverting colors, and for me, even working with white text on a black background can be really beneficial. So you can turn this on at any time in accessibility settings um, or through pressing Control Search H, as in high contrast. All right, so next up, um, we've got the ability to highlight key parts of the screen just to add more visibility. So you can choose to, to actually enable one, two, or all three of these at once. And this will allow you to highlight with a focus ring around the text caret, the mouse cursor, or the keyboard focused item if you're pressing tab to navigate through um, the interface. And they just add these colorful rings to this content. Um, so for example, if you're moving your mouse cursor around and you want to have a little bit more visibility, then that, that focus ring will appear. And it will be there while the mouse is in motion. And then as soon as you kind of stop the motion, it will fade away into the, into the background. Um, same for if you're typing. It's going to give you a circle around your text caret while you're typing. And then once you're done, it'll fade into the background so that it's, it's not meant to add more clutter. It's just really meant to be there to give you a little bit more assistance and more visibility when you need it most. OK, so now we're going to shift a little bit towards features that uh, may be helpful if you have any sort of motor or dexterity challenges. So first of all, we have an on-screen keyboard. And this, again, you can enable through accessibility settings. And when this is on, uh, basically, any time you put your, your text caret into an edit field, whether it's an email draft or um, the Omnibox to type a URL, this on-screen keyboard will appear in the lower portion of the screen. And then you're able to use your mouse cursor or the touchpad or a touch screen if you're using a touch screen Chromebook or even an external joystick device to be able to then control and type um, on this on-screen keyboard instead of physically typing on the, um, the QWERTY keyboard on the Chromebook. 
Um, it is also important to mention that right now you can access a microphone icon from the on-screen keyboard, and you can use this microphone icon to dictate, um, so speech to text, into any edit field. And coming soon in version 69 of Chrome OS, we are also launching an, a standalone dictation feature um, where you'll just be able to press a shortcut at any time to dictate into an edit field um, or press a little button on the interface to do so without needing to have the on-screen keyboard up. So stay tuned. That will be coming soon. We also have a variety of different physical keyboard and touchpad settings that may help to kind of tweak the experience. Um, so on the touchpad side, uh, you can enable tap dragging, which basically will just allow you to lightly tap the touchpad instead of having to more forcibly push down to click. Um, we also have tap to click, which goes takes that basically one step further, where um, if you wanted to, for example, rearrange tabs, your Chrome tabs that are open, or if you wanted to rearrange icons on the bottom shelf of your computer screen um, and kind of rearrange the order, instead of having to forcibly push down and then drag, you can just basically lightly double tap and then drag, um, just so that if, if it's not possible or if it's uncomfortable for you to put that sort of pressure on the touchpad, this helps with that. Automatic clicks is also available. And this will allow you to basically hover over any given item that is clickable. And then Chrome OS will click it for you. So a little circle will appear. And then it kind of zooms in and in and in. And then it clicks for you. And you can adjust the amount of time that you want to hover before it actually clicks. On the physical keyboard side, there are a few different settings that you can choose. So for example, um, adjusting the keyboard repeat rate and the delay before repeating. Um, so particularly for anybody who is finding it difficult to lift their fingers in order to um, not kind of con uh, continuously type the same letter, you can definitely adjust that and, and find ways to make the keyboard experience more usable for you. OK, so moving on to just a, a new feature to make your Chromebook easier to hear, uh, which came out, um, I guess it was late 2017. So we have this feature called Mono Audio. And it's a very straightforward feature in the sense that it basically will just help to stabilize the audio and play the same audio through both, um, both speakers or both headphones, uh, both earbuds. So this can be really meaningful for anybody who happens to be hard of hearing or perhaps has um, hearing loss in one ear and doesn't want to miss out on any content that's playing um, in stereo sound. So mono audio will just allow you to kind of um, equalize it and play the same audio through both. All right, so moving on to uh, talking a bit about text-to-speech and what we call spoken feedback on the Chromebook. So actually, you might hear right now through the speakers, we have our ChromeVox screen reader, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, that's been speaking out loud every time that we change the slides to give us a verbal cue of what the slide is. So first, um, select to speak, which came out in 2017. And uh, Select to Speak is basically the feature that I use most on a Chromebook um, with in addition to the highlights and uh, a bit of magnification. So with Select to Speak, it's kind of like on-demand text-to-speech or screen reading, where you can basically choose a section of the screen or a like, specific piece of text or even just one line at a time. And basically, you hold down the search key and click that, that one line, or you can drag a box around content and hear whatever text is actually in that section. Or you can also even um, drag it over icons or drag it over the tab section, and all of that will still be verbalized for you. So we have a quick demo video of how this works. OK. So this is just on the Select to Speak um, settings page. So I'm able to just hold down search here and drag a box around content. You can change languages. You can change the pitch and the rate. Select a speech rate, normal. Select a speech rate, slow. Select a speech rate, faster. And I'm going to pause it. There we go. Um, nope, there we go. 
Okay, so, and it's also important to note that we have added in the ability to highlight word by word as you're listening. So this is really important, not only for um, our users who are like me, who happen to be low vision, but honestly, select speak can be beneficial for anyone who has any sort of um, reading or comprehension challenges, who just benefits from being able to both listen to the text being spoken aloud while also visually reading at the same time. So that word by word highlighting and the ability to choose a different color and find the right, um, the right color that works best for you in the highlighting can help to draw that, that kind of audio and visual together and make the experience more holistic. OK, so for anybody who is um, low vision or fully blind and wants more support from their screen reading experience, um, we have our ChromeVox screen reader, which is built in. All of these features are built in uh, to the Chromebook. And you can enable ChromeVox at any time, even on that very first screen that you boot up your, your computer for the first time, by, pr by pressing Control-Alt-Z, as in Zebra. And ChromeVox is actually a really robust um, screen reader. We've, we've worked hard on building this screen reader. Um, we launched the original version back in 2011 on Chromebooks. And we got a really long way with that first version. Um, and we collected a ton of user feedback. And we realized that we actually wanted to kind of sit back down as an engineering team and rethink and re-envision how the screen reader worked. So um, back in February of 2017, we actually launched a completely new rewritten version of the Chromevox screen reader, which is now just the default version that's running on every Chromebook. And this new version comes with a lot of um, enhancements and improvements and a lot of new features that are built in compared to the, what we call the classic version. Um, it's just a faster, more consistent experience with the way that it's actually interacting with the web page or with apps. Um, it also has much simplified keyboard um, navigation commands. We heard a lot of feedback from our classic version that there was too many keys to hold down. And uh, it, we, we heard the term finger gymnastics. So we wanted to really reduce the amount of keys that you have to hold um, to navigate really efficiently. We also added what we um, call a speech panel at the top of the screen, where you can see visually um, for anybody, for example, whether it's um, somebody who is assisting with tech support, or um, a teacher, or whoever it might be um, who's working with a screen reader user, can actually read the, the text at the top of the screen of whatever the screen reader is verbalizing. And you can also optionally see what Braille output would be if you have a connected Braille display. That's also an option to see at the top of the screen in kind of that visual output. Um, we also added a new menu system. So at any time when you have the Chromevox screen reader running, you can press search plus period. And the Chromevox menus will, will come up. And this will give you kind of your one-stop shop into your Chromevox options of all the different jump commands and then keyboard shortcuts, um, all of your open tabs, uh, your Chromevox options, which will let you go to things like uh, opening up the tutorial, for if you want to kind of look back at the tutorial, um, opening up keyboard learn mode, which is there for anyone who is newer to the Chromebook keyboard or perhaps just newer to screen reading as a whole and wants to better learn the keyboard with audio spoken feedback telling you what the what the keys are or whatever keyboard shortcuts you're pressing um, in, in spoken feedback. So there are lots of different things in the new menu panel. Uh, we also redesigned all of our sounds. So um, in addition to spoken feedback that you hear verbalizing, you also will hear little sound effects behind different pieces of, of the interface. So for example, if you navigate over a button, um, if a developer has, has actually marked up the button to, uh, with proper text, proper alt text, and it, you, know, you will hopefully hear what the button is for, not just button. Uh, you'll hear what the button's for. You'll hear that it is a button. But you'll also hear what we call this ear con, which is a sound effect. Uh, this is a little, um, a little ding in the background just to give you an extra layer of context of the type of uh, UI that you're navigating to. So there are different ear cons for buttons and for links. And uh, we worked hard on redesigning these to be subtle but still informative. And one additional thing that we did with these sound effects is that we added them into stereo sound with this new version of the screen reader. So basically, if you navigate to a button on the right side of the page, you'll actually hear that it's a button. You'll hear what the button's for, hopefully. And then you'll hear that sound effect 
in the right ear or in the right speaker. Um, same if you navigate to a link on the left side. You'll hear that ear con on the left side. And this is helpful just because um, you know, it gives the, the blind user a little bit more context into how the visual layout of the page actually is, which if you're navigating linearly just item by item by item with a screen reader, sometimes you're going to miss that. So we wanted to add a little bit more of a contextual clue there. Same for using um, the touch screen with a Chromebook with Chromevox enabled as well. Kind of same sort of idea there, where you can actually use your finger to drag around the touch screen and hear whatever's underneath it. So in that sense, you can also kind of get a better sense of the visual layout, where things are oriented in a given app or in, um, in a web page. So with Chromevox, we also have built-in Braille support. So at any point, you can just plug in a USB Braille display, um, which they come in lots of different shapes and sizes, a um, number of different manufacturers. Uh, all you need to do is plug in the USB Braille display, and then it should just begin to work for you. You don't have to do any sort of specific setup. Um, and with this, you're able to get Braille output to read whatever is being focused on the screen. Um, you can also use the Braille keyboard, which is on the Braille display, to do input and actually type. Um, there are lots of different configurations and settings for, for your Braille output and input. Um, and we've recently added a number of different jump commands so that you know, if you wanted to, you could actually use the Braille Display's keyboard to execute these commands and jump around the screen, to, for example, to move to the system area or to move to the launcher. So that if you're um, a heavy Braille user, you don't have to move your hands as frequently from the Braille Display to the QWERTY keyboard. Uh, we wanted to work on making that experience more seamless. So we've been working hard on, on Braille support. So with that, oh. Actually, no, I'm not passing to Roger quite yet. One more. So I uh, just wanted to quickly mention, so those are all of the different features that are built into Chromebooks. And there are a lot more things that you can do. We just have a very brief example of a few different extensions that are um, kind of accessibility oriented that you can further add uh, to your experience, whether it's on the Chrome browser or on your Chrome, like the Chrome browser on your Chromebook. And again, there are so many different extensions that you could explore. But the point here is that you, know, you can leverage these extensions to then further customize your experience. And the three that we have on the screen right now um, are really there to help to increase visibility. Um, so Beeline Reader is one that I've just heard so much great feedback um, about. This is built outside of Google. Um, and basically, it is meant for anybody who is dyslexic. And what it does, it's super simple. It will basically take a, a, a block of text, and it color codes it. So for example, it will take the end of one line of text and make it the same color as the beginning of the next line of text. So for example, red will go into red, blue will go into blue, red will go into red. So your eyes are just having an easier time visually following where you're supposed to go. Um, Beeline also supports a dyslexic-friendly font, which some people have found really great success with as well. Um, the Google Color Enhancer is another extension which is available for anyone who happens to be colorblind. And this allows you to figure out, you know, well, which type of colorblindness am I, or do I have? And uh, then you can actually choose the right sort of color filtering to make the colors on each web page more visible to you. And then Read and Write for Google, which is made by TextHelp, um, has also been a very, very popular extension out there. Um, has a lot of different features and functionality, like word prediction. Um, let's see, we've got also a different flavor of text-to-speech with word-by-word -word highlighting, picture dictionary, um, voice notes that you can add in. So this is one that we've heard time and time again is really, really popular and heavily used in EDU and in school systems. Um, so again, these are just examples. There are so many others that are out there and are really excellent for further customizing the experience. And with that, I'm going to pass to Roger to tell us about G Suite accessibility. Thank you, Laura. I also like to do a little bit of a poll, so I'd like to know how many people out here use G Suite with some type of assistive technology, if you can clap. Okay. I also like how many people don't use G Suite with assistive technology. Okay, got a few people. I myself do use G Suite with assistive technology, and in this case, I use the screen reader because I myself am blind, so actually if I look out here, I don't see anybody, so thanks for clapping, at least I know somebody's here. Appreciate that. All right. So I'm actually going to turn up the volume on the screen reader so I can kind of follow along a little bit better. Volume, 83%. Cool. 
Alright, there we go. Stage change. Slide 28 of 85 G Suite. Okay, so G Suite has been designed to work with your underlying platform and the assistive technology that you may be using. You know, for example, the Chromebook features that Laura went through, we've designed G Suite to work on top of that software stack. So that, you know, if you have, say, the Chromebox screen reader turned on, we'll use it. But if you're also using, you know, the, uh, the virtual keyboard, you know, we'll work with that as well. We also design it to work on other platforms, like the Windows platform, if you're using assistive technology there, or the Mac with its built-in software, Android with its built-in software, for example, the TalkBack screen reader, or even voice access, which is a way to interact with your Android device using just your voice. And then also with the iOS itself. And G Suite consists of many different applications. I'm only going to cover some of them, but the other things that you may be familiar with, Gmail, Calendar, Drive, Docs, Sheets, Slides, Sites, and Classroom, and also Hangout Meet, Hangout Chat. So there's many different pro products that we're working on within G Suite. Page change. Slide 29 of 85 keyboard. So this one, we kind of call it accessibility feature, but it's actually a feature that's actually useful to basically anyone. Like if you want to have a more efficient way to use your product, you can use the keyboard features that we have built in. For example, if you're in Gmail and you want to start to compose, you can just press the letter C to start the compose experience. Same thing in Calendar. Or say if you're in Google Docs and you want to you know, emphasize a, like a section header to make it a paragraph level two, you can use the shortcut control alt two to go ahead and make that a level heading two. So there's a lot of different keyboard shorts that's available within our applications. And to make those easier for you to find them, we also have, needless to say, keyboard shortcuts to bring up the keyboard shortcuts. So if you're on the Chromebook, the, if you're in most of our applications, it's the shift forward slash, which is actually the question mark. But if you're in docs and you do that, it means you're going to type a question mark into your application. So there, we use the control forward slash as a way to be able to bring up the keyboard shortcuts. So again, you know, check these out because you'll find there's a lot of things in there that can make your experience easier or possible, but just also can maybe turn you into a power user. Because I like to joke and say that a screen reader user is actually a power user because of the way they use the keyboard. Page change. Slide 30 of 85 keyboard condolipsis. So some additional things that you can do with the keyboard is if you are in, say, Docs, Sheets, and Slides, we actually have menus available in there. But because it's run inside of a browser, we can have some conflicts with other applications. So there, to actually open up, say, the File menu on Windows, and you can do this in Chrome OS, you add the Shift into the modifier. So it's Alt, Shift, plus F, instead of just Alt, F. So it's just a slightly different way to get access to the menus. We same thing on Chrome, you know, Mac, we have a slightly different way of getting to those menus. But it gives you the power to get to it. And then even once you open them up, we have the keyboard accelerators. For example, if you want to do a rename, it actually becomes a shortcut of the form Alt-Shift-F, and then the letter R will open up the rename dialog. So again, it's a powerful way to do it. And as you go through the menus, it'll mention them to you what they are. In addition, though, you know, sometimes going through the menus, it's like, OK, where did they hide this different thing? And you have to go through and look for it. We actually have a feature, what we call search the menus. So you can do a alt forward slash. In that case, we get a little edit box, and you can type in a term and search for it. For example, one that I use all the time is if you want to put a title on the first line of your document, I don't remember which menu it's under. So I do the alt forward slash, type in the word title, and then down arrow, and then I can get to that basically get to the menu directly and be able to hit enter and go into it. So again, it's another way, and my mic just cut out. OK, there it's fine. <laughs> so it's just another way to get, essentially, another type of keyboard shortcut. Page change, type, edit and format with your voice in docs, no keyboard needed. So another feature we have is, are we in presentation mode? Yes. OK. Is in Google Docs, we added what we call voice typing, editing, and formatting, where you can use your voice to dictate text, but then you can also select it, highlight it, edit it, bold it, and things like that. And this is great from an accessibility perspective because, one, if you have like a motor impairment, you know, be it temporary or permanent, for example, you know, we had somebody actually work, we saw an email, somebody said they broke their hand and they're looking for some voice typing technology, so something you can deliver for them. But we've also heard it useful, like in a school environment, 
that you have some students who were struggling to do the homework, but when they were able to use the voice typing, that actually made it so much easier for them to set down on the homework because they didn't have that challenge of trying to figure out what to type, how to spell it, and things like that. Were they able to go through that? And we've had you know, students and parents come up to us and say, this has been a game changer to them is because the voice typing that was made available to you. So let me go ahead and see if I can play a video here. Sticky mode enabled. Link. Press search plus space to activate. Plans tap about blank tab. Volume. Slide. Oops. Took us out of the slides. My drive. Google Drive. CP100. Okay, here we are. Flat page change. Slide 32 of 85 platform magnification. Presentation viewer. Sticky mode disabled. Sticky mode no next link. Page change. Slide 33 of page change. Page change. Okay. So you're on Braille now. Play button. Slide one of eight. CP113. Hmm. CP11. Has anybody else had demos not go quite the way you want? <laughs> okay. Previous left arrow button. Braille landscape. Slide 35 of 80. Volume. Slider. 83%. View. Many file. Many so white. One of us. You jumped out of. What's it? You jumped out of present mode. Yeah, I know. I was trying to get back into it. View, menu file, menu item, every chain, file, menu item, every document region. View, menu file, menu item, every change you make is oh, up. Up the file. Okay, well, we'll do this without going through this particular demo. Okay, just because we're going to be running out of time here quick. New slide, control plus M, button, space, new slide with layout, button. So do you want to go back into present? Button. Present mode. Disable, splitter. If you want to go ahead and do it real quick. Yeah, sure. Landscape. Alert. So Press let's just go CP back. Maximize. Minimize. Button. Press search page CP. So I'm just going to go. It just is not letting us. I'm just going to escape quickly. Landscape. Slide 37 of 85. Creating accessible content. Slide 30 application. Okay, so you were on screen reader? Nope. Screen reader, supported screen read, slide 31 of 85. Okay. Voice typing, docs okay. typing. Okay. Slide 31 of 85. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Doris. Mm -hmm. CP113G's previous left arrow button. Mm, not slide answer. 31 of 85, voice typing. Previous left arrow button. Play button. Next It's right got to be something with the, slide um. 31, voice typing, disabled. Yeah, for some reason, it's not advancing right. Q and A button. Press so, plus yeah, there's got to be something with the slide. present mode that's going on right now. Yeah. So, um, what I'm going to okay. do? Can okay. I? Okay, why don't you go ahead and drive and I'll yep. just go and talk yep. to you. So Perfect. Perfect. Right, going to the magnification slide. So the other thing that you know, we've done is we've designed it to work with the magnifications that built in. But inside of some of our applications, we actually had to go through and allow you to enable a feature for us to work with magnification. So, example inside Docs. Under the accessibility menu, there's an ability to turn on magnification, which means then you'll get cursor tracking when you're working with software that supports the magnification, like that's built into the Chrome OS or the Mac. The support for Windows is coming soon, and we hope to have that you know, very soon. Okay. All right, it's going to go to the contrast slide. Yep. Okay. And then on another feature that we've done is you know, we designed it to work with underlying you know, uh, contrast enhancing software. But we've also done a couple of things inside, for example, Gmail. You can go in and enable a theme that will also give you high contrast just within, within Gmail. And that gives you the advantage to having a more control and flexibility over the contrast enhancement that's occurring as you're using your applications. And next one. OK. Screen reader. OK. And then also, you know, we designed it to work with the different types of screen readers. So if you're on the Windows, on the Windows operating system, we've designed it to work with the JAWS screen reader and the MEDA screen reader. And mostly we do recommend that you go ahead and use Firefox, but we're also working on the Chrome support. If you're on Mac, we would of course use the VoiceOver. And on Chrome OS, like Laura was talking about earlier, we are designed to work with the, voice, uh, the Chromebox screen reader. And if you're on Android devices, we're designed to work with the TalkBack screen reader and then on iOS, also with the voiceover screen reader as well. So again, we give you different choices, but we make sure we have something available for all the major applications. 
or operating systems that's out there. Okay. So the next one. Braille. So you know, the screen readers is designed, actually, there's two aspects to it. There's what we call the spoken feedback, where you would hear sound as you're going through the application. But also, we've designed, you know, with your using a screen reader, you can attach a Braille display to that and be able to work with that. And again, we, within docs, sheets, and slides, in order to take advantage of a Braille display, you also need to go in and enable what we call Braille support. So it's also under the accessibility settings sub -menu. Okay. Oh, let's go to the next one. Closed captions. And then for the deaf and hard of hearing, you know, most of your content is in text, so that you know, gives you kind of some accessibility by default. But in Drive, you can add audio files and video files into Drive. And you can also add closed captions. So when somebody's doing playback, they will also get you know, the closed captions presented to them as they're going through the, the content itself. So the audio is made accessible to that class of users. Okay. And the next one. Yep, creating accessible content. So one of the things we've been talking about is the features themselves which makes the applications accessible. But it's also important that if you are creating content that's going to be consumed by somebody else, to make sure that it's, it's, it's accessible. And some of the things we've done is in, say, doc sheets and slides, and even slides, that we have the templates that will allow you to create more accessible content by default. For example, in docs, in, you know, if you want to emphasize a section heading, then you can go ahead and set that up as a heading. But it's also properly marked up, so it'll be announced to the screen reader user as a heading. And the same thing for the bullets and list. And also, it gives you good contrast. So again, we do it to make it easier. Also, if you have graphics in your application or your content, you can add alt text to it. So you can add a textual description to the content, which makes it becomes more consumable to somebody. Because it's not a lot of fun, like if you're going through it and you hear image, A, B, C, one, two, three, and nine, seven, and it goes on forever. So just go ahead and add some alt text description to that so somebody will know that, you know, for example, this is a presentation of the Moscow Convention Center with next outside, you know, indicating that it's the next 18 conference. Okay. Next one. All right, communication resources. Okay. So just so that we have some time for, for questions, we'll go ahead and wrap up here with some resources. So there's a lot of different features, and the best way to find out about the Chromebook, the G Suite, and also our other Google accessibility features is go to google.com slash accessibility. So you'll find resources there to tell you about product features. There's also a blog there where we're announcing feature changes and feature improvements to our application. So it's an, also a good way to keep on with what is changing and what is different. There's also get in touch with us capabilities there that you can give us some feedback or also go off and ask us questions. For G Suite, I've also created a shortened URL called g.co slash G Suite Accessibility, which will get you direct access to our Help Center articles and the Getting Started videos that I've created for using some of our products. Finally, the Chrome Lord has created several Chrome resources. Do you want to talk about those real quick? Yeah, right? sure. So we have um, we've got our Help Center, which has an accessibility section, uh, kind of similar to what Roger just described for the G Suite side. Um, we also have a video series, which is available as part of our Chrome Developer YouTube series. Uh, there's a whole playlist about accessibility, and right now we've got 18 videos in there that kind of take you through different ways to use the different features that I kind of very quickly ran through today, um, and also how to navigate the Chrome browser on different different platforms by keyboard, and we're going to be adding more and more videos to that list. So all of these resources are actually, if you just want to remember one link, it's the google.com slash accessibility, and then you'll be able to get to all these different resources from that central site that we have. Yep. Um, and then there is one more email address on here that I know Roger mentioned. You know, uh, you can get in touch with our teams. You can get in touch with what we have is a team of support agents now, um, which are there. You know, people who are there to provide email support. So if you just give uh, reach out by email to disability-support at google.com, you will reach a team of agents who are there to really help um, answer your questions, take your feedback. If you're encountering any sort of um, any sort of bugs or just you want to provide user feedback and make sure it gets to the right teams. Uh, the right product areas at Google, definitely use that email address and it'll come to us uh, or be sent to the, the proper team.